Hello, hallelujah, gracious, holy, heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Christ Jesus. Welcome to another Bible study with the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel. Uh, today we're going to be studying uh, Psalm 118, continuing our study that we started in the book of Psalms. Uh, let's see here. And then on our next Bible study class, we're going to do... Uh, Psalm 119, and that's going to be like for 20 weeks, we're going to be in that psalm, and I'll talk more about that, I guess, tomorrow, but today we're doing Psalm 118, and this psalm appears to be by a, uh, an, an Israelite, I want to say, you know, someone in the kingdom, of course, because they're encouraging us to give thanks unto our Heavenly Father, our God, our Creator, you know, and again, like I said, Whenever it doesn't identify who actually wrote the psalm, we know that it's written by someone who has faith in God, someone who believes in God, someone who is a part of the kingdom of God, okay? And it's because it's from the Old Testament, you know, Psalms was, uh, is a part of the Old Testament uh, book, then, you know, we know that it came from a sanctified uh, Israelite, we want to say, you know, from the tribe of Israel. Okay, so we're going to go ahead on and start with Psalm 118. And it says, Go give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endures forever. Let Israel now say that his mercy endures forever. So again, like I said, you know, because this is, uh, we're in the book of Psalms, we're in the Old Testament, where the majority of, you know, God's people came, uh, that he had chosen were the children of Israel. And so that's why I say this song uh, more than likely was done by one of the children of Israel. So then he says, let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endures forever. And see, then they're, they're talking about Aaron. And Aaron and Moses were back in the children of Israel day. Verse 4, so let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endures forever. For I call upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. For the Lord is on my side, and I will not fear. So what can man do to me? Because, you know, the Lord has already decreed and declared, if I be for you, who can be against you? It doesn't matter who is against you if God is for you. If you're walking in the will of God, if you're walking in his spirit, you have been transformed, converted into the kingdom of God, and you are walking in the will of God. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. So he says, verse 7 here, going forward here, it says, uh, The Lord takes my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. Okay? And that hate is, you know, a very strong word. Now, God hates also. He, God hates evil. He, You know, he hates when evil is possessing a person. And when evil is operating through a person because it then manifests in the earth, okay, against people. And usually it's against his people because they're good. You know, they represent light and then evil represents darkness. So God hates evil, okay. So, and, and, and you know, he's not too kind, kindly with heart with those who play with evil, you know, who uh, they're a part of, they indulge in evil. And they take part in doing evil things, witchcraft, uh, poisoning people, uh, molesting children. Uh, you know, those are considered evil things because they would oppress, put a person into an oppressive, in an oppressive state, raping a person. Um, you know, those are the things that put a person into an oppression that is so difficult for a person to come up out of. And God is not pleased with those type of things. And of course, we know there are certain other things that he lists murder, uh, things of the flesh, you know, adultery, fornication. You know, God hates certain things. So hatred is, you know, something that God, you know, he does talk about when he refers to evil in the earth. So then it says here, it is better to trust in the Lord than put confidence in princes. And it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. All nations can pass me about, but in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. 
Okay, so here we have here, we're talking about, this is an Israel, no doubt, the child of Israel. They're dealing with nations that are around them uh, that is not in the, a part of the kingdom of God, okay, and they're coming up against them. And so that's what they're saying right here. They compass me about, yes, they compass me about, but in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. They, they compass me about like bees. They are quenched as the fire of thorns. For in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. For thou hast thrust sore at me, that I might fall, but the Lord help me. See, they're trying to make this person uh, fall from the faith, you know, to do something that would take them out of the faith, you know, with God. Take them out of their covenant with God. And they realize it. This person is realizing it and is written it in this song. For the Lord is my strength and song and is become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. For the right hand of the Lord does valiantly. For the right hand of the Lord is exalted, and the right hand of the Lord does valiantly. For it shall, for I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. So here you hear have this individual. Again, we can tell he's a, is part of the tribe, one of the tribes of Israel. And he's talking about the right hand of the Lord. We have done a Bible study on the right hand of the Lord. Because it moves, and when it moves in, you better move back. <laughs> because he comes in with that right hand, and he does what he's coming in to do. And save, seal, and deliver. So verse 17 says, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. For the Lord has chastened me sore, but he has not given me over to death. So open to me the gates of righteousness, and I'll go in to them, and I'll praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For this gate of the Lord into which the righteous shall enter, I will praise thee. For thou hast heard me, and are become my salvation. Hallelujah. And it goes into this right here. The stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner. Because, see, they were against uh, this child. Whoever this child is, of course we know it's the child of Israel, one of uh, Jacob's generations, and they had refused him. And this is also, you know, the same verse that's spoken of about Christ Jesus too. That how they refused Christ, and he was the head cornerstone. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead on in verse twenty-three. So it says, "This is the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in our eyes." For this is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So save now, I beseech thee. O Lord, O Lord, I beseech thee. Send now prosperity. So blessed be he that comes in the name of the Lord. For we have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. God is the Lord which has showed us light. So bind the sacrifice with cords, even unto the horns of the altar. For thou art my God, and I will praise thee, and thou art my God, and I will exalt thee. Hallelujah. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he's good, and his mercy truly, hallelujah, endures forever. Hallelujah. This is a song of praise and just worship to God's wonderful deliverance and his mighty power. And it's discussing also his right hand. We're just giving God praise for his help in times of need toward the enemies that, you know, surround us and try to come up against us. As he has decreed and declared so many times over and over throughout the word of God, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And we reign and rule in the heavens and in the earth. Hallelujah. By the spirit of the almighty God. So some verses that we're going to talk about in this psalm is verse 8 is one of them. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. So be it. Hallelujah. Yes, it is. Because, uh, let's see here. And the scriptures that I'm led to on this is going to take us over to Jeremiah. You know, we got to keep our trust in the Lord because man can lie. But God does not lie. He's always faithful. And he is truth. He can't lie because he's truth. 
he cannot lie. But man, we can walk in truth, but we can unfortunately slip away over into a lie, telling a lie. But God does not, he doesn't have that. He just can't do that at all. Okay? So Jeremiah chapter 17 is where I'm led to regarding this verse. And trusting in God. And it's uh, Jeremiah chapter 17. And it's uh, verse 5. Thus says the Lord. And this tells us. Cursed be the man that trusts in me. Okay. So there's a curse. Because God becomes jealous and envious. You know. You don't put your trust in man. You put your trust in me. I created you. Man did not create you. God created you. So why would you trust in him? So he says. Uh, Cursed is the man that trusts in man. And makes flesh his arm. Whose heart departs from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert. And shall not see when good comes. But shall inhabit parched places in the wilderness. And a salt land. And not be inhibited. For blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord. And whose hope the Lord is. So who put their hope and trust in the Lord. They are blessed. And those who trust in man. Are cursed. And you know the difference in that. Let me go ahead and finish this first. Uh, verse 8. It says, uh, I'll say this again, verse 7. Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. For he shall be as a tree planted by waters and that spreads out her roots by the river and shall not see when he comes. But her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought. And neither shall cease from yielding fruit. So it would definitely be a green leaf. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Sweet Jesus. So, uh, verses 7, verses 5 and verses 7. It tells us where the curse comes in and where the blessing comes in. Cursed be the man that trusts in the man. And then 7 is blessings is the man that trusts in the Lord. And the difference in all of that is, you know, with going over verse 5, the man that's cursed that trusts in man is the man that trusts in his own ability also. In his own ability to save himself, okay? <laughs> because thinking that his works and what he does will be good enough for God. And, you know, not that it's not good works and not that it's not, you know, a good thing. But if you don't trust in the Lord and the fact that he sent salvation into the earth, through Christ Jesus, then you are doing the opposite. You're trusting in man, and there's a curse attached to that. Okay, and I'm going to go deeper. We're going to go deeper in Revelation with this, but I, you know, because that's where salvation makes the difference in the life of a human being. Okay, um, but we're going to stick on topic. We're going to stick to the topic here, and that's Psalm 118. Okay, and the revelations that's coming from it. So the next verses that we're going to talk about from that Psalm 118 is going to be uh, verse 22 and 23. The stone which the builders refused has become the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. And now that revelation is in the book of Matthew, the New Testament where Jesus Christ is actually saying the same exact thing. In reference, uh, in a parable, and he's giving it in reference to himself and also the saint, because you know, once you become a part of the kingdom of God, you become as Christ. Christ lives through you, you become as a Christ, heavenly, celestial being, a part of heaven. So, let's see, going to Matthew chapter 21, and uh. This whole chapter is good in reflection to those two verses. But I'm going to hear, I'm going to start here at verse 33 in uh, Matthew 21. He says, Here another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard, and he put a fence around it, digged a wine press in it, and he built a tower and let it out to certain people, and went to a far country. When the time was come, drew near, uh, you know, for him to 
collect, receive the fruits from the men that he put in his vineyard, he went out to them and uh, he took the servants. He said to them, you know, because he wanted to receive what was the manifestations from the vineyard. You know, where's the fruit at? Because, you know, a vineyard is a place where you grow grapes and crush fruit and you're able to make this great wine and then you can drink it. And so is this parable in reference to the body of Christ and the child, the individual that comes into the body, that comes and they are part of the, the covenant of the kingdom of God. So he's telling the, the parable and giving uh, this example of that. And in this particular parable, he's saying that those that he did send out into the vineyard and he was expecting a manifestation from he was expecting to reap a harvest from he was not able to do that okay because of the fact that whenever he did send his son into this vineyard they had no respect for his son okay they didn't reverence him as the son whom Christ has you know God has sent into the, the vineyard the place that he considered to be his own you know his own inheritance he was not even able to send some, send his son into that place to reap from the vineyard the manifestations of it. And so he tells us, Jesus Christ tells us this story right here, starting at verse three, uh, 33, is in this parable. Okay, and he says, uh, let me see, where would I go? They, do, they actually wanted to kill him, the heir, which was, again, the son of the owner of the vineyard, which would be, in our reference, Jesus Christ. But as, again, we become like Jesus Christ, it would be us. Instead of them acknowledging the heir, acknowledging the one coming to the vineyard and uh, seeing who that, you know, the person, the son was, they hated it again in reference to Christ because some instead of seeing who he is seeing him as the son of God they see him as someone else and they don't reverence him as the son of God and they hated him uh, just as some of the Jews did in, in the word of God and they stoned him the Pharisees the Sadducees they were definitely those who did that uh, are the same with certain people you may deal with in your life and so this is what that story is referring to and in doing that, it gives reference to uh, verse 22 and 23 that the stone that the builders rejected became the head corner, which Christ Jesus did because he became the head corner for salvation. He became the head of salvation. You need him in order to have salvation. You know, the, the person that they are so mean and nasty toward, you know, you got to come to that person for what you need and what you want is what he's saying, basically, just to break it all down into the lowest common denominator. And he says right here in verse 42, Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The same has become the head of the corner. And this is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in his eyes. Okay? Which that stone, which was Jesus Christ, and that stone may be you going wherever you go or whatever you may be getting ready to do may be sent into that particular vineyard, okay, that place uh, where God has already generated his fruit and is expecting for you to be able to receive when you go into that vineyard. And he says right here in verse 43, therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. And whosoever shall fall on the stone shall be broken. But on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. Okay? That be grinded. Let me say that again. Verse 44. Whosoever shall fall on this stone, whosoever shall fall on this Christ, okay, shall be broken. But on whomsoever it shall fall, it will be it will grind him to powder. That's a powerful statement, okay? And we, we definitely want to take note of it because that's what Christ Jesus is saying. 
he's he's saying this right here regarding the stone that the builders rejected and this will be the effect of it okay so that's in reference again going in going over verses uh, 22 and verse 23 and and that's in Psalm of course we're in Psalm 118 giving a reference to those two and basically understanding that whenever uh, God sends someone hallelujah give us your revelation Heavenly Father when God sends someone into an, a territory okay into a place uh, wherever it may be, where there is a, considered to be a vineyard, it could be a church. Okay, we're going to say we're going to use that as an example also because a church may be a place uh, God considers a vineyard because it would be a place that uh, he a people that he has converted into his kingdom. Okay, because that's the only time a vineyard a place is even considered to be called a vineyard because it has to be a place where his wine. You know, it is there, you know, the wine of the Holy Ghost, okay, inside of people, hallelujah. And so, uh, whenever God sends you into that type of atmosphere, into that vineyard, and there's a rejection, what he is saying right here, because he did the same thing with Christ, and he became the head of the cornerstone of, the, of that particular thing, like. Jesus Christ became the head of salvation. Okay, so that's going to give us our Bible study in 2 Psalm 118. Uh, God bless you, and I look forward to studying with you as we continue to go forward on the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible Study video channel.